Two Chairs No Waiting, episode number 165, Cruise to the Taylor's House, part one. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the wonderful folks over at Weaver's Department Store. It's Christmas time, folks. Drop by over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Pick up your Mayberry fan, something they're going to love because they're, it's definitely there. Weaversdepartmentstore.com. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by audible.com. That's right. Audible.com, you can get a free a free book, 14-day free trial. If you go to audibletrial.com slash two chairs. So drop by over there. Get you a free audio book. You got to love them. I love them. All right. So, hey, folks, I am your host for Two Chairs No Waiting, Alan Newsom. It is wonderful to be back with you this evening. I've been gone. I uh, had to do pre-recordings of uh, episodes for the last several weeks. So uh, Tonight we're actually doing a live stream. Got several people in the chat room. Let me see how many we got in there right now. Fifteen. Fifteen folks in there visiting with one another while I am, uh, you know, chatting around with you and with them. So, folks, if you get a chance, definitely drop by over there. Now, it's a lot of fun. So you can go to live.twochairsnowaiting.com and get to the live stream on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern. We'd love to have you. All right. Well, back in November, November 12th through the 17th, several folks around Mayberry went on a cruise to Mayberry 6. That's in 2011. And I'll tell you what, we had a great time. It was a wonderful time, uh, just uh, fellowship and enjoying one another's company. And I just got to tell you, I had a wonderful, wonderful time, as I always do. I've been on all six cruises, and there's going to be a seventh cruise coming up next year. So I definitely want to invite you to go on that with us. It's going to be October 9th through November the 3rd, 2012. And it's going to the Caribbean on uh, the Carnival's Destiny. You can go to facebook.com slash Mayberry Cruise if you'd like to get some more information or talk to the people that have been, find out if they liked it, look at pictures from past years. It's all there. So drop by over there and you'll enjoy it. I'll put a link in our show notes to that so you'll be able to find it. But we had a wonderful time and a great part of the cruise was actually we got to uh, visit with uh, Marsha Ann Hudson about a home she was blessed to live in. Now, it was I'm telling you, this house, if you haven't seen it before, it's the Taylor Home Inn, and it, it's just an, a, a, a beautiful piece of work. Yeah, i never seen a man work so well with his hands. Yeah, it was just a great place that she was blessed to uh, live in and have been a part of building, and uh, it's just a home that any fan of the Andy Griffith Show would give their eye teeth to have for their very own yeah i know we're not supposed to covet but i kind of covet it i don't want to have to move where it is but i like the house and i can't even guess how much barney fife realtor would have been able to get from some mayberry fan to buy a house like this of their own that looks like andy taylor's house on the andy griffith show i mean exactly like it now this episode is going to be a two-parter and it's going to be fairly long because the uh the first section is 23 minutes or so long after i quit talking here at the beginning so it's going to be a fairly long one, and it's one of the, it is the first podcast episode because this is an audible audio podcast. I I want it to be audio. I have the face for an audio podcast, and this is the first one. I would recommend that you go to twochairsnowaiting dot com, and you can right there on the page there will be a link to or you can watch it right there to our YouTube page. Now our YouTube page. Uh, has got all kinds of stuff on it uh, from past years and uh, all the past episodes of the podcast. So you can actually watch them there, or you can just go to twochairsnowaiting.com and you'll be able to find them there as well. They're, they're there uh, for you to watch and enjoy. But this is the first episode that I would actually say you really are going to want to go over there and watch it. Because this is going to be talking about a lot of things that it would be neat to be able to see at the same time you're hearing it. Now, if you can't do that, there's going to be links or pictures, I should say, a link in the show notes to pictures uh, on our fan page for Two Chairs No Waiting, the uh, podcast. We have a fan page over there, and you'll be able to go there and look at the pictures as well. They're already there, 
They're related to Two Chairs No Waiting, number 165, this episode. And they're called Taylor Homie, and there's a lot of pictures there that you'll be able to go and see. But again, I would recommend you might want to watch the video of this podcast. So let me uh, let me go ahead and start uh, moving us over that direction here. We're going to want to watch these uh, watch this wonderful wonderful uh, interview that was done on the Mayberry Cruise and with Marsha uh, Marsha Ann Hudson and and man it, this is going to be great. So you just sit back and enjoy and and enjoy the music. Now here it is. This was on the Mayberry Cruise 2011. Okay, so, uh, well, it's Marsha's presentation, but I want to kind of tell it from somebody's perspective of somebody that went there. And Marsha's going to chime in with her details because it was amazing. Last uh, July, Jan and I were able to head up to the Taylor Home Inn up in Wisconsin, uh, which uh, Marsha and her ex-husband Dave had built and was running ran as a bed and breakfast for six years. Well, this place is amazing. As we're driving up, uh, you know, as you can see, this looks like Andy's house. It's not uh, kind of like Andy's house. It looks like Andy's house when you're driving up, and uh, you drive up there in the front yard, and the Mayberry experience starts right then. Because you start. I don't know how many of you people have been to Mount Airy and been there. There's that feeling you get about being in Mayberry. I would say that going to the Taylor Home Inn was even a stronger experience because as you went there, you're walking up here on the front porch. But let me just show you, I've got a little video I can play of what it looked like actually walking up onto this front porch. Let's make sure it's full screen, there we go. Uh, this is actually, you walk up onto that, that scene that you have seen on the Andy Griffith Show so many times. You walk up there and, and uh, Marsha, they've got the Andy Griffith Show theme song playing uh, uh, as you're walking up. You can hear the music play. You walk up and you expect to see Andy and Opie and Barney and uh, everybody just sitting out on the front porch right there with us. And it was just an amazing experience uh, uh, getting there because all the, the furniture, everything, the scenery, it's, uh, it's just... Uh, it was a sight to behold. Now that was just the outside. I hadn't even got inside the place yet. I was already excited about just seeing the outside and being part of the experience there. And I walked in that front door and this is what I saw. And this is from where this picture's taken is about where I just stopped dead in my tracks too, because look at that. That that looks like we're on the set of the Andy Griffith show itself. And uh, it, it, that was the look on my face about for the first 10 or 15 minutes I was there, I just stood there and wouldn't walk on in because it was just an amazing thing to see. Because you can see, uh, you know, it, it almost had, it ought to have velvet rope roping the place off because there's the china cabinet, there's the the, the fireplace. And uh, tell a little bit about that. Well, we do have to have people, I do have to encourage them to come on in because they, they do seem to feel like they're, um, they're only supposed to see it, not be part of it and experience it. And Alan wasn't the only one that just stood there and looked at it. We've had people that uh, they, they just stand there and, and we have a little uh, wood floor entryway and they, they won't step off of that and on into the carpet because they're coming into Mayberry where they've never been before. We've all been there in our hearts, but we've never been in that room. And um, it, it, it's, what, it's fun to watch everybody's reaction to it. Uh, when they come in. It's as exciting for us as it is for everybody else. And you can see here, this is a, just some video we shot of it. Just the, the, the entire room, it's amazing, the fireplace. Uh, we'll talk about that as we go here. But here's, Marsha's actually, she had photographs you see me holding there from, I believe, the guitar player? Yes. Yep. Jim Lindsay. Yep. Jim Lindsay. The, uh, the, the second time that Jim Lindsay came to Mayberry, uh, they sit on the hearth and they play the music and so we have that picture uh, from that first season so that people can compare the fireplace to the way it looked on the show. Let's go back to that real quick but you can and, and you can see uh, you can just see the silly grin on my face right there <laughs> but uh, when you compare that that picture to the fireplace it's amazing and you see over there in the distance you've got Aunt, Aunt B's the dining area the, the hutch there 
And as we go there, if you look right up there in the top right corner of that hutch, you see a little thing sticking out up there. Reckon what that might be. What should be up there? That's exactly right. Andy's pistol's up there. The amazing thing too is when you walked into that room, you knew where everything in there was. It was, it was. You, you've watched it on the Andy Griffith show. You've experienced it. You've, you've seen it so many times. You know the, the that gun was up there was just. Uh, there were just those little bitty tidbits that were you guys had captured that well, were just amazing. We've had people that that would that would come in and they check. Just you know the real fans versus the occasional fans when they look to see if the gun's there and they know why there's a ceramic pelican on our mantle. If you don't know why there's a ceramic pelican on our mantle, I'll tell you, and then you can be one of those that know everything about the show. And we'll be able to see that in a second. Now, Marsha also had, this is in the dining area. It's, uh, let's see if I can go back here. Let, let's go back a couple. Uh, the, uh, it's right there behind where Andy would have sat you know, it's right there on the on the left there, right behind where Andy. Barney. I mean Barney, yeah, Barney, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm getting excited now. <laughs> but this picture, you know, I saw it and I was like, how, how did you figure it out? Because she had a still image from the show that they had captured that when you look at this photograph uh, that she had, these are just, see the dark areas and stuff on this? That's all you could really make out. But you were able to figure out, uh, show them about that. Well, we knew that. The, again, the occasional fans wouldn't know if we had it exactly right, but the true fans would know down to the pictures on the wall. So for about four years, I kept looking for a picture based on one of the, the pictures out of Jim Clark and Ken Beck's books. Um, and it, we were doing this at the time that it was VHS and not DVD, so you couldn't really get a good freeze frame. So all I could look at was just to see the little dark places and the light places, and it looked like something round in the middle. and and it looked like snow but that was all you could see and i kept thinking it looks like well, the way i equated it was it looks like something from a jigsaw puzzle uh, so it had to be a charles wysocki or grandma moses or one of those the early primitive uh, artists so i kept looking for grandma moses pictures and could never find the right one after four years i finally found online uh, through a search of grandma moses that picture so I held up my book to the picture that I had on the computer and all the dark and light places were in the right spot. So then I knew what the name of it was called and if you want to know, it's called Sugaring Off Again. Grandma Moses did about 30 different Sugaring Off pictures that she named that. So when I do a search, it took a while, but I found it on eBay and ordered it and it was the right one. So it was one of the, what we call the Mayberry Holy Grail problems that we were able to solve. And it was really just amazing, and again, going through the house, the details that, uh, that uh, Andy Griffith Show fan would pick up on were amazing. And, and they had the photographs to prove it, really. I mean, they were right there, so you could actually pick up the photograph from the show and look at the real room, and, and it was just amazing. So so there's the whole layout of the room. You can see the, the you know, the rock fireplace sells the whole room really but then it's not just the fireplace look at all the other details look at the they got the couch the little table where gomer at one point was sitting there watching tv with andy and them had his legs stuck all the way under the table you know he's sitting on one end with his legs out straight in front of him there's the table this the chair that's in the near ground here the dark uh, leather chair it's where andy was reading uh it was the witching time of night. You know, reading that to, to Opie when the ladies kept coming in. Uh, amazing. It was just amazing. And there's the rock. That big rock in the middle of the fireplace was the real cellar. And how did you get that rock? How did you do this? Well, this was one of those situations where, again, we knew that the, that the real true, the people who really truly studied the house before they came and a lot of them did when they knew they were coming would know if we had it right or not. So we went to, we made a big cardboard template of the rock that you see, what I call the Chevrolet symbol. Um, we took it to one of the places that do the created stone. And they, of course, when they know that you need something for a special project, the price goes up exponentially. They told us that yes, but for between $3,500 and $4,000, they would make us a rock. And that didn't include delivery and installation. We said, thank you, but no, thank you. One of the fellows that worked for the company said, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So uh, my husband at the time and I uh, built a, a big cake pan basically out of uh, plywood and metal flashing. We used plaster pairs to do the striations that were in the rock. 
And then we, we, I didn't have anything to do with that, poured, he poured the cement with reinforcement in it. And for $45, I, we made our rock. So we said, our, our thank you. <laughs> our, our saying is only God can make a tree, but we make rocks. Now, now you made the rock out of concrete or something. It's like out that. of cement. But, yes. but then you painted it. Yes. That's the thing. She's the one who painted the rock to make it look like. You see how the bottom looks like the the fireplace has been burning. It's kind of gotten a little bit of soot or something on there. And well, we looked again at the color pictures, and and we just had a flat gray piece of cement up there that that uh, didn't even have the wall around it yet. At that point, when we did the rock, we did it first. Um, so I got out my, my, my paints, I do decorative painting, and I painted and sanded and painted and sanded and, until I finally got it to where it looked like it was, the color went deep enough. Then I painted the soot on there and sealed it. So if you were to examine it closely, uh, hopefully you wouldn't be able to tell that it's not really a rock. <laughs> you, you can't. I can, I can, <laughs> when, you, when you walk up, you want to rub it, you know, because you walk up to it. Anyway, there's just another detail. And you can see right here the pelican sitting on the, yeah. sitting on the mantle. And if I can say one other thing, when we were building the fireplace, you know, everything is, uh, well, even building the house, how to determine what size everything is. How do you know uh, what size the, the living room was? Well, if you watch the different episodes, it changes uh, based on what they, how much of the space they needed to show for the show. For that episode but what what my ex-husband did was he he's a little over six feet tall and he figured andy was too so he'd watch andy walk from one place to another figured that it took about a three foot stride for somebody over six feet tall so if he took four steps that was 12 feet so that's how we knew to get the approximate size for the room itself um and then he also built uh, kind of a little to scale foam core model house with a little andy in it and he figured okay if andy was laying down standing there like Alan is. If he's laying down, there'd be about two of him for the for the fireplace uh, mantelpiece. So that's how we kind of determined how, how big everything should be. Cool. Now the other thing, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about as we show some more pictures, but the other thing, the, uh, the house, this is a real house. Yes. And the one on the show obviously was not real. So you know on the front porch when you came up and it was kind of uh, dipped in and then stuck back out and over? Well, uh, for the house to have actually been shaped that way, the kitchen would have been, what, three feet wide? Yeah, it would have been cut in half. It would have been a closet. <laughs> so yeah. they had to adjust some things. But this, uh, you remember on Luke Comstock when he was coming by and Andy picked up the phone and answered it, there it is right there. And it does work. And the phone worked, yeah. 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 So, and there's the heading upstairs and the, uh, the doors, the French doors there. Now the French doors actually go back to where y'all live. Right, the, the first season had French doors and after that it was a window. We tried to figure out where we could have our, it's not separate living quarters, it was just a bedroom. Um, and also comply with the state of Wisconsin for bed and breakfast uh, rules. And so we could, we had to have a separate uh, bedroom area from the guests. So we left the French doors from the first season because we said it's easier to walk through a door than it is climb through a window to get to our bedroom. So that's how we did that. Right, and then this is heading back. This is back toward the front, the front door of the TV. We're going, and then we're watching Chef. I think so. Is watching oh, on man, TV. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, there it is. And this is just another angle from over toward the piano, which obviously there's a piano on this wall. It has to be, doesn't it? Uh, looking there and see the Goober's hat there, and you see into the kitchen. So let's go in there and look around. Now this is their kitchen. Now the kitchen changed throughout the seasons, so they did. You did the best you could to figure, to make it consistent. Right. Uh, we had again uh, the situation where, uh, if you remember the the dining room area, the window that was always over at B's shoulder. If that was an exterior wall, for that to have run the the length of the house and not have any, uh, if you watched them drive up, it was a straight wall. That side wall was along the driveway. Uh, for that to have happened, again, the kitchen would have got cut in half the other way. So what we did was we pushed the wall out and put a laundry room. So we had to have a door that goes to our laundry room. Uh, beyond that, uh, and having a new refrigerator and a newer telephone, we, uh, we, had it, we had it pretty accurate. But of course, in the color season, uh, they had the door where our pocket door is there, the one that's painted blue. So we just tell everybody we have the black and white season door and the color season, <laughs> uh, season's door. So, uh... And this is a shot we didn't see ever on the show, really. You never saw the entire wall over there where the, the stove is. You'd see Aunt B cooking over there. You'd see it from uh, from the other side of the wall looking towards you. 
but you didn't really see that. And again, on the table here, she had photographs or uh, screen captures from the show, so you could actually see how close this was. Up to the point of even like the, over here, uh, I think the next picture may be this. Well, no, there's, but oh, you had the, you had this hutch built. We had the hutch built, and, and uh, very, very quick story about that is we had an Amish woodworker in Southern Minnesota make it. We just took pictures from the show, and we also had a video and um, uh, had that along to, to, to show him so he could get an idea of exactly the dimensions. Then we realized if he's Amish, he's not going to be watching television. So we, we had to just re resort to just taking pictures to show him the dimensions of what we wanted, and then he built it and we stained it so it would look like it did on the show. Now, the one disappointment I did have about the kitchen, there was no crack in the ceiling. No, right. we painted over it so you can't see it. <laughs> the, the Sims did you notice. <laughs> now, on the, on the countertop here, you can see uh, these, these were exactly, she had, a, she had a screen catcher right there. Where you could look at those canisters or metal canisters, that, and they're exactly like the ones that they had on the show. I mean, the detail that you guys went into are just amazing. You got the toaster there on the uh, left. And those canisters, uh, and the even canisters had the yellow lids. They had some that had red lids that they manufactured, but the yellow lids are what were on the show. So that's amazing. what we did. And we also have, I don't know if you can see, yeah, yes. the tea towel up there says, yeah, some, some days it says 1960, some days it says 1961, some days it's 1967. Yeah, this, this, is, this little towel has those yeah. on there. So, I mean, the, the amount of detail were amazing. Of course, there's heading back out into the, uh, the dining area. And um, well, and Floyd was hiding behind the <laughs> door of the refrigerator there, trying to see in. But uh, we're head, we'll head back in there now. There's looking back over toward the front door, and there you can see where you made the entrance, and that's where she was talking about people would stick right there on that wood and not right. walk on in. And there's the closet where Barney was always, you know, he hung himself, you know, roping himself. They taller, yeah. Now what they did was very clever because they needed an office. <coughs> That, that's actually an office and it's stairs that go down into the downstairs area. Yeah, right. So instead of being actually just a closet, they actually made it useful. And when you go downstairs, this is what you find. The uh, Mayberry Courthouse is down in their basement. <coughs> you know, and you can go down there. And again, of course, I'm like a, it's like Christmas when I was there. You know, it's like, oh my goodness, I cannot believe this because of the details. Uh, look at there on the table. You see this right here? <coughs> Yeah. All right, Lucky. You and me's busting yeah, out. Yeah, you and me's busting out tonight. That was bar. That was the uh, thing you hang on the wall in the cell. Uh, they got the gavel. There's the gavel and the phone. And there's uh, Jan getting her hair cut by Floyd. <laughs> and uh, but you can just see all the details. Got the little fan. They got the the the, the map. Now this map is a good story. Uh, this map, you know, everybody's always trying to figure out what this map was. Well, they were actually the ones that figured out exactly what the map behind the courthouse really was. So you, you know. Well, when, uh, when, again, when we were building the house, everything was on VHS, so didn't get a good look at the map. You saw, we, we all know that they used at least three different maps. And uh, what one was North Carolina, one was Idaho, upside down, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And then the other, they settled in about the third season. So what we did when the show came out on DVD, which was the year that uh, we officially opened, um, they had, um, we, we got thinking about what episode shows that map really well, and it was the episode with uh, the Miracle Sab. And Barney's walking back and forth doing his lawyer letter uh, that he's dictating to Opie, so we put it on the computer and freeze framed it when Barney was to the left, and then when he was to the right, so we could see both sides of the map. And then Dave sat down with an atlas, we had, uh, the the curved piece that you see in that in that map we didn't know if it was a road if this was a park if this was a county what it was Ohio River. when we yeah when we sat down and started looking through the atlas page by page uh we discovered that that was the ohio river uh and it said river but it didn't say ohio so then you know we we had to, we knew it was a river so then we sat down and started going through it page by page and figured out that it's uh cincinnati pre-interstate so then we went online and found a map of Cincinnati before they built the interstates and got one that had the same legend and, and all of the same writing in the same places that they used. So that's how we did that. Now, uh, it wasn't colored in green. So uh, being uh, having attention to detail, we sat down with six green pencils and tried to figure out which one was exactly the right color green. Oh, you colored uh, it. I which, didn't know yeah, that. We colored it in. Yeah. Wow. 
But I, I noticed as I was looking at it, there's actually a place in Cincinnati called Mount Airy. I just thought that was interesting, so I, I zoomed in on that. So, I mean, that, that was a big find for you guys finding out what the thing, uh, the actually map was. So now it's hanging there. Of course, here's over at uh, Barney's area of the courthouse. And y'all had the two little tables made. We Barney did. We, we, we found the chair and we found the Motorola radio and the microphone in different places, the gooseneck lamp and all that, but we couldn't find the right table. So we just had a carpenter make them for us so that they would look like they did on the and uh, it, it was just an amazing thing to see. Now, even even all the way that you know, you could I can almost see Floyd sitting here in the chairs talking to Andy. But you look over there in the on the the wall, right, right. Let's see, actually, right here. That's a that they went to detail. They got the the that's the place of allegiance, I believe, isn't it? On the wall, which is if you watch the episode, you're gonna see it. It's there. Now this is back around toward the. Uh, the cubby hole, or where you go back into the back room, back room. You know, where the bulletin board is. The bulletin board would be on the wall just to the right. Well, this is the, well, you know where it is. You guys have seen this. So they got the, uh, what are these? Barrister, Barrister bookcases. Uh -huh. Barrister bookcase. And you figured out what this was, which is a, right. a president. It, it's a presidential chart. If you, if you want to try to find one, it's a woman's day from uh, the Eisenhower inauguration. They, uh, Again, it was one of those things where nobody knew what it was exactly. We all felt like it was a presidential timeline of some sort. Well, I happened to pick up an old Woman's Day magazine for the Bed and Breakfast because all of our magazines are 1961 and before, pretty much. A uh, few of them a little more recent. But I found a Woman's Day magazine, and in it was the ad for this poster. So that's how I figured out exactly what it was, and I knew what to search for. Uh, and it turns out that Woman's Day magazine would put out a new poster every time, or double page chart every time there was a new president inaugurated so uh, we could find finally the one that was the right one because they each had a little bit of a change in the way they were uh, printed now they were made so when we figured out that it was the one with Eisenhower which made sense then then we found it in online and uh, good old eBay and uh, then got it framed amazing now, also on that, that cabinet was this. Now, we saw this episode uh, Sunday morning where Barney kept spraying the throat spray in his mouth, the honey and water. Well, they even had that sitting on the top. I mean, it was uh, amazing stuff. So there's uh, me studying the old bulletin board there. And, uh, and there's the back room where Barney would sleep, you know, this back there. And, and Floyd dropped by again. So let's, let's hear from Floyd here. Let's see if we unmute this. We'll play it. Oops, back. While he's getting it, real quick, I'll say if you're seeing these uh, plastery edges, that's on his presentation, not on the walls. Yeah, yeah, it's it. Yeah, it's it. Local barber captures his skate kind of. Yeah, 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 that's me. That's me. You know, we're up in the cabin, up in the valley. Yeah, you know, I told Andy, if you come up there, it's goodbye now. Because uh, Al. He dances with sound. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude. Oh, is it? And I got a shot in it there, by the way. Yeah. And I tell you this, too. Yeah. If those hamburgers are ruined, I'm not responsible. <laughs> well, it was so good to let us show that to the guests that came the rest of the summer after they were gone. And uh, they all enjoyed the house, but then they'd see Floyd in there and He's good. He should do that more often. <laughs> you have no idea. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was definitely a, a, a fun for me, I tell you. All right. So uh, there we are. Okay, so Whoa, it started uh, again. We'll stop. There we go. All right, folks. Hey, I hope you guys are enjoying that. That is a, a just a, a little bit of what was going on in the Mayberry Cruise. I, I tell you. Uh, it was an hour long, so we've got another segment that's going to be about the same amount of time. And I, I just got to tell you, it was a pleasure for me to be able to do a little bit of that with Marsha. That was, uh, these are some pictures right here I'm showing uh, if you're watching the video or if you're, if you're not, it's, they're not right. But this was me and Marsha on the cruise. We were set up. We had a projector and stuff. So we were able to sit there and show the pictures and actually talk as we did it. And I'm telling you, it was, uh, it was a pleasure for me. And uh we, we did it so that, uh, you know, I was telling the story about me going there and then Marsha could give us all the details about how she was able to pull all this together, how, uh, you know, how they were able to do that and what the uh, Taylor Home Inn, 
all the stuff there. And if you look at the pictures or if you watch the video, you can see just the detail that they went to. Now, the next next week, we're going to do part two of this uh, of this wonderful, wonderful presentation that Marcia did. Uh, just uh, fun. I had a great time. I got excited. <laughs> Couldn't even remember what I was wanting to say, talking about Barney sitting there or Andy sitting there at the table. And that's Barney's seat and all that stuff. But folks, it, it was uh, such a pleasure. I, I appreciate Marsha letting me uh, spend that time with her and just help present uh, what, what she had done, what they the the stuff there and the things that she was able to figure out from that painting, uh, just all the things there, the, the rock and the fireplace, amazing. I know, you know, here I am talking about a rock, but it was just so amazing to see that rock and uh, just see the fireplace and see the Taylor's house. There it was. So, well, folks, I hope you guys are enjoying that, and I hope you're going to enjoy next week. I know you will, so make sure you come back. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you've been up there and seen the house, call in and give us some uh, feedback. We'd love to hear from you. You can call me at 888-684-8415. You can email me at floyd at imayberry.com. You can, uh, let's see, you can go to the Facebook page at facebook.com slash two chairs you can go there or you can just go to two chairs no and leave your messages there well, folks it's a long episode 30 something minutes long i encourage you to go watch the video or go check out the show notes and look at all the pictures because they're going to be on there so folks i hope you've enjoyed it i know i have and thank you so much for spending this time with me in mayberry and we'll see you next week on Two Chairs No Waiting, your Mayberry podcast. See you guys later. Bye.